Good morning, everyone. This is Song Hee Lee. I'm an assistant professor working at Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. I would like to give some research updates in the program of strawberry molecular genetics and genomics and talk about our recent advanced techniques in strawberry tissue culture and how we use them to improve strawberry cultivars. The University of Florida IFS strawberry breeding program has been developing varieties over 70 years. All varieties from our breeding program are developed using a conventional breeding process of crossing and selection. Developing superior cultivars require breeders to combine all desirable characteristics from multiple breeding parents. In general, the use of conventional breeding approaches to combine all traits of fruit quality and disease resistance into a single variety is difficult. Therefore, to make the conventional breeding process more precise and efficient, the method of DNA-informed breeding is used in our breeding program. DNA-informed breeding makes possible breeders to more effectively identify desirable genes present in breeding lines. Compared to decisions made based on phenotypic data alone. This is actually the picture from my daughter, the strawberry and DNA structure. We know there are total about 120,000 genes in cultivate, cultivated strawberry. To utilize the DNA informed breeding for new cultivar development, we need to identify genes for important breeding traits and develop DNA marker for selecting seedlings and breeding parents. Okay, I want to explain briefly about how we use DNA marker and testing in the breeding program. In each year, our breeding program made across over 100 and shown in the picture, each tray represents for one cross. We use DNA marker to select seedlings which have our target breeding traits. For example, the cross from Florida Brilliance and one advanced selection 1649-90 can produce seedlings containing fruity peach aroma, phytophthora resistance, and anthracnose fruit rot resistance. Using DNA markers, we can only select seedlings that have all three target traits or characteristics. This process is called gene pyramiding or stacking. This slide shows how we prepare seedlings and do sampling for high throughput marker assist seedling selection. When seedlings are grown in pea pellet about this size, a tiny leaf tissue from each seedling is collected by a tissue puncher for rapid DNA extraction. These are all DNA plates that we screened last year. Each well represents one seedling. The total number of seedlings that we selected were about 50,000. This white stroke this white plate is for PCR genotyping and each plate can test 384 seedlings in one hour. All our strawberry DNA testing is done in automated genotyping system and the data is processed with the computer program. Currently, we have DNA markers for phytophthora and correct trichome crown rot, entering nose fruit rot, angular leaf spot, day neutrality, and peach like flavor. Using DNA markers and tests, our ultimate goal 
is to stacking all important breeding characteristics for disease resistance and fruit quality together into a single cultivar. Other than DNA test, what else we are using for developing new cultivar? From here, I want to introduce some of our new plant breeding techniques that we are applying for improving strawberry cultivars. Using the recent advanced DNA technology, we can modify a specific gene function and obtain desirable characteristics such as fruit color, flavor, and disease resistance. This approach is referred to precision breeding. Somaclonal variation breeding is one of the methods that we are using for cultivar improvement. What is somaclonal variation? It is the genetic variation occurred in plants that is produced by plant tissue culture. This slide shows the process of tissue culture for radiance and sweet sensation from runner cut to tissue cultured plant, it takes about four to five months. Soma clones are propagated in greenhouse for, for the future experiment. We tested the sweet sensation soma clones in field plot for plant size, fruit color, and quality, and selected a few soma clones that show compact plant size and Fruits are more visible for easier harvesting. Soma clonal variation can be also used for increasing disease resistance. Sweet sensation is susceptible to Phytophthora crown rot disease. To see if any soma clones are more resistant to the pathogen, we inoculated to we inoculated soma clones with and screened for the resistance. We successfully identified several soma clones that are resistant to Phytophthora. The picture also shows the enhanced root development in resistant soma clones after the pathogen infection. This is Phytophthora inoculation test for radiance soma clones. Radiance is still important variety for our breeding program and highly susceptible to Phytophthora. We screened over 700 soma clones for Phytophthora crown rot screening and identified some soma clones are resistant to Phytophthora. Soma clonal variation can be also used for heat stress tolerance. We screened radiance soma clones under high temperature stress in greenhouse and identified some soma clones such as SC61-1 are more tolerant to heat stress than the original radiance. CRISPR gene editing is another advanced technique that we are using for cultivar improvement. This technique can precisely alter the target strawberry gene by modifying DNA sequence. CRISPR creates in DNA that could be achieved through conventional breeding, but in a more precise and rapid way. Because CRISPR strawberries do not include non-strawberry DNA of any kind strawberries edited with Therefore, CRISPR will be considered as non-GMO. This is the new white strawberry cultivar that UF Strawberry Breeding Program released this year. These white or pink strawberries were not made in a lab. They are actually found in nature and we developed this unique white strawberry through the conventional breeding process. In here, we need to think about what makes the red fruit to white fruit. The red color of typical strawberry comes from pigments called anthocyanins. 
white strawberries produce a much lower amount of these compounds in their flesh than red strawberries. As I mentioned earlier slides, there are 120,000 genes in cultivated strawberry and maybe 13, 13 genes is missing or not functional in white fruit. We recently completed whole genome sequence and assembly of Florida brilliance and now able to search any genes what we want to look for. What you see on the right hand side graph is strawberry genome scanning between red and white fruits. And what we found here, there was significant change of DNA sequence in chromosome 1-2. After looking into more inside this region, we found a single gene is missing in white strawberry. The name of gene is MYB10, so this gene is involved in anthocyanin synthesis. To do CRISPR gene editing, we must have detailed information for target gene and DNA sequence. Because we now know the function of gene and cloned the gene of a white strawberry fruit, it is possible to conduct CRISPR. This picture is colors of Florida brilliance in tissue culture plate. The CRISPR gene editing construct for the white strawberry gene methane was transformed into brilliance cali. The upper picture shows that expression of synthetic green fluorescent protein in brilliance strawberry. When CRISPR construct is successfully delivered into cell, green fluorescence can be observed under UV microscope. This is about three months old embryogenic tissue and shoot regeneration has been just started. We are, now, we are not sure yet if any CRISPR plants will be coming out from these shoots, but we will confirm by DNA sequencing later. This is the summary of my presentation today. We have DNA markers and testings available for day neutrality, peach like flavor, phytophthora and collect trichome crown rot, anthracnose fruit rot, angular leaf spot, and white fruit. We have started stomach clonal variation breeding for phytophthora crown rot resistance, heat tolerance, and we are planning to do now herbicide resistance for glyphosate 2,4-D and halosulfone. For precision breeding with CRISPR gene editing, we are now doing CRISPR for white strawberry and planning to begin CRISPR for botrytis gray mold resistance and powdery mild resistance this year. I thank to all members of UF IFS strawberry breeding program, which is combined with strawberry genetics and breeding and strawberry molecular genetics and genomics. I give special thanks to Dr. Whitaker for this great support and research collaborations. I also acknowledge and thank to all support from FSGA, FFSP, FDAX, and IFS. Thank you for listening and this is all I have today.